Mm -hmm. All right. And this is the mousetrap car that I built. I have named him Omri because he sucks. And um, <laughs> basically, I built this for a competition. So there's also competition standards. But this is a basic idea about how to build a mousetrap car that goes forward and then backward without you touching it. So it's going to be fun. <coughs> Um, basically what we used was a plastic lid for the tire, but if I had to go back and do it again, I would probably use a grinder wheel because it's a little less floppy. Um, <laughs> then we used the stick and we twist tied the wraps to the two mouse traps that we used as our propulsion system. And then we used CDs in the back. World of Warcraft is not required. It just helped. Well, anyways. <laughs> Um, the key to building one of these is, you know, having a good solid frame so that when your mouse traps go off, you don't fall apart and hurt yourself. And the key to make this car work is how you roll it. And depending on how you may or may not build it, it's all going to depend on your front axle. Um, as you can see, I have a bobbin and a little wooden dolly thingy in my bobbin which I'll explain to you later because the key to this whole entire car going forward and backwards is in the way you roll. Um, and it's really also the length of your string. So depending on how far you need it to go, I guess you just experiment with the length and go with it, with it from there. I have marked the top of my tire with a line, just kind of like a reference point. And I'm going to count. For mine, I needed to go about seven meters forward and back. And I was there give or take, it wasn't terribly accurate. And what I do is I just roll it, the first, my first two, on the bobbin, like so. So that's one, two, then I bring it back over to the wooden dowel. Three, four, five, and then I bring it back up on five, six. And that's the reason for the dowel. And because you are having this arm pull, pull backwards that's connected to your mouse traps, that's why you need a kind of bigger axle length for your thing to roll off of. Otherwise, it doesn't move, or at least on this style of car. And if you will notice, there's some notches. Um, filed into the bobbin, which is going to be the way we loop our car back around. If I can get it, sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. And then I roll it the opposite direction. So that's one, and then back on the wooden dowel, two, three, Four, back onto the bobbin, five, give or take. Now, to set this, you just hold it down like you do oh, any other regular mousetrap, like so. Bring it over. Like that. Except for when it snaps, because then it hurts you. <laughs> Set it kind of like this. It's a little stiff because of all that weight. At and I keep touching the cheese because I love it so much. And you just set it like that, and it should be good to go, depending on how lucky you are. <clears throat> Usually, one will be just be able to good to hold it. Mine's a little bent from competition. Hmm. There we go. Now you can see it's all good and ready to go. The key also for your mousetrap cars, for those of you who haven't built it yet, is um, when the stick comes up, speed is not the race if you're going for distance. If you want to go faster than everyone else, yeah, just, just let it do its thing. But if you're going for distance, you have to slow it down. Make sure there's a lot of friction in between you and whatever it is. And if I rolled this right, it'll work. And if I didn't roll this right, it won't. But I'm pretty sure I rolled it right. <laughs> no, I didn't. There we go. 
rolling it right is the key. Also making sure it doesn't hit walls is another key. Ta-da! And that is how you make a mousetrap car go forward and backward. The key is all in the rolling.